Hello, my name is Thane and I like to experiment with all kinds of AI technologies. And this time, I actually wanted to stray away from Midjourney for a bit and make a series where I explore other AI tools that I have been experimenting with. I wanted to start off with Kyber. It is one of the tools that I mainly use when I want to make my images move. Of course, it's not the only one out there, but it is one I have been using for some time already. Most of them are actually based on stable diffusion in the background for generating images, but each of them does bring something unique to the table. But let's get right to it. You can get started with Kyber on their website. I will link it down below for you. Signing up is pretty straightforward in my opinion, just click on the start free trial button and enter your details. Or as an alternative, sign up with an existing Google or Apple account. At the time of making this video, I think you will get 60 credits for free when you sign up. But it seems that the free trials are often exploited with these services, so it may not be available at all times. And it is probably going to change with time. When you run out of Kyber credits and decide that you would like to continue experimenting with it, then you can sign up for a paid plan. There are three different plans at the moment and you can sign up for a monthly plan or an annual plan. The cheapest plan is currently $5 per month and available only as a monthly plan. It's always good to compare the plans to see what you get. But the main differences seem to be the amount of credits you get each month. The pro plan has everything that the previous plan has and as an extra bonus, it allows you to generate longer videos and upscale them. And artist plan seems to only have the beta access as an added bonus on top what the pro plan offers. The menu of the website doesn't have very many things there, so it is not overly complicated in my opinion. The gallery is the place where you can see some of the things other people have made. I think this is curated as you are not currently able to go and like the videos other people have made. My videos is the place you can see an overview of the videos you have created, and you can click on each of them to open the end view that you normally get when your video has finished generating. Over here you can see your account details and how many credits you have left, and you can also manage your account and select your plan. But the most important place is the plus create video button. This is where you actually start creating your AI videos. You have three options to select from. Flipbook, Motion and Transform. They have recently added in some more details to this page. And you can also see how many credits each generation will cost you. My favorite out of these has been the flipbook option. I think it is an older generation, but it has had the most possibilities. You can generate videos up to 8 minutes, which is the longest of these three options. I normally use this with an initial image that I have generated with Midjourney. But this has its own built-in image generation based on stable diffusion, so you can just do text to video. But all of these details can and will change with time as new features are released. I have been making this video for so long already that there have been some additions lately. The most recent development concerns the motion option. There is a new version 3 for motion that really expands on its capabilities. As it is in beta mode, I can't yet go into more detail about it, but I shall look at it more closely once it becomes generally available. It has some great promise and most of all I like that it is now also audio reactive. The third selection is Transform. The name says it all. You can give an existing video to be transformed into something else while keeping some aspects of the original video. Especially the movement and the objects and the characters from the original video. Let's now take a closer look to how the video generation usually looks. It's pretty similar with all the different modes, just with small differences depending on which option you choose and what is available. We shall take flipbook option as an example, and you will first see an option to upload existing media. You can upload an image or an audio clip to start with, but you can proceed without them as well. This is the prompt window where you specify what you want to create in your video. You can write anything here or select some of the options given to you as an example. These change as well every time you open up this page. Also, whenever you have added an image or video as a starting point, there is a button next to the subject box where you can do an auto-detect for the subject. 
The next box is the style. I do have some mixed feelings about these boxes being separate and mandatory to fill. But at least you get some style ideas here as well. There are some styles in the Curated Styles collection made in collaboration with Linkin Park, and there are also text options which do change up as well, but I have noticed that there isn't that much variety in them, the same ones keep repeating over and over. When you are happy with your prompt, you can move on to the video settings. You have several options to choose from here, but let's go through everything on this screen. Keep in mind that these options may not be visible in every scenario. Any time you upload source media, some of the options will be automatically decided based on your source media. For example the video duration and aspect ratio may not always be changeable. So the video duration is literally the length of your video. The maximum depends on the feature that you use, and even your plan. The aspect ratio has some basic options available between 16 to 9 for landscapes, and 9 to 16 for portrait size. The camera movement allows you to control what happens in the video, you can zoom in and out, rotate the camera or have panning in different directions. You can even select multiple options at the same time as long as they are not in conflict with each other. For example, you cannot combine up and down at the same time, but you can combine up and left. The Evolve gives you a scale from 1 to 10 to control how much the video will deviate from the first scene. And the boomerang option allows you to create a video that starts going in reverse at the halfway point in the video. It's a neat option, but you can easily do that in a video editor as well, for free. Next is the preview page. Here you will be given four options to choose from for the starting frame. Select your favorite by clicking on it and you are ready to start creating your video. But there is one more option that you can do. It is the plus scene button. This allows you to add more scenes in sequence to your video with quite a seamless transition between the different scenes. You will be taken back to the prompt page, where you can change your prompt entirely, both the subject and the style. The settings page gives you some options, but some options are no longer available to change. You can modify the duration of this scene. Set the camera movement to something different, and you can change the evolve value. The preview page looks slightly different as well and it only gives you one option to choose from. But actually, it will not even use this image in the video. I guess it's some kind of an image prompt that is used whenever the frames for the video are created. But now you can either add more scenes to your video, or you can press the create video button. It's pretty hard to miss. And then you can start waiting for your video to complete. It's going to take a while, especially depending on the length of your video. Don't be surprised that it starts auto-playing in the background when it completes. It's especially noticeable if you have any source media with audio included. But the videos are created at 720p resolution by default. You can either download that, upscale it or share it. Depending on your plan you can upscale your video for some extra credits to either 1080p or 4K resolution. You can also regenerate the video if you are unhappy with the outcome but want to use the same settings. Or you can open it up in the prompt editor again to tweak your prompt. And that's everything you need to know to get started with Kyber. As I mentioned earlier, I normally use this in combination with images generated with Midjourney. And often I use music generated with Mubert as source audio to get those videos that pulse on beat with music. So if you have been wondering how I have done some of beginning and ending parts in my videos, this is one of the AI tools I have used for those. Let me know in the comments below if you have used Kyber before or if you have never even heard of it before. Also let me know if you would like me to do more videos about all the other AI tools I often use. There is even some out there that I have been wanting to try out but never got to it. Thank you for watching, subscribe and let's continue prompting.